they could get, could get saved, God blessed them. But we all win. I, I need to stop here just a minute. You know, it's a competitive world we live in. And there's some competitive people in this room. And I like competitive people. You can't hardly do something with somebody that's not competitive. You show me somebody that doesn't care if they win, I'll show you somebody that will never do anything for God. That's right. If you and I are going to play a game, I don't care how old you, you are and how old I am. We're playing a game. I'm playing to win. I'm not going to cheat. And I may lose. Now, if we're playing a brain game, I got a chance. If we're playing, if we're racing for the next 10 kilometers, I'm probably going to lose with most of you. But I'm going to try. My eldest son was just a little boy. He was five or six. And we'd play ball together. And this elderly preacher, the older preacher came to our house. And he said, Chester, you got to let the boy win some. Because I was beating him. I wasn't letting him win. If he's going to win, he's going to earn it. You'll feel better about it. He said, you got to let him win some. I don't have to let him win some. The day will come soon enough he'll beat me, and he's never going to let up beat me. You think when I'm 60 and he's 30, he's going to let me win? Uh-uh, not going to happen. It, and it hasn't happened. I like to play golf. Both of my sons are golfers. I taught both of them how to play. It would, used to not be any kind of problem to beat both of them. And now, the only way I can win is if they hit bad shots and I goad them a little bit. Because when they get upset over that shot, they're going to hit another one right after it. <laughs> and if I just keep quiet and play my game the best I can, they'll be, they'll be so frustrated with themselves and they'll score so bad that when it's all over with, Dad's score's going to be lower than theirs. And that's the only, time, only way I win anymore. But I do win occasionally. And then after it's all over with, I, I repeat the lesson to him again. I've got the best score. I won because you lost. You gave it away. Because you couldn't control yourself. And you couldn't deal with the fact that you're not perfect. And you couldn't deal with the fact that you can't hit perfect shots all the time. My eldest, he's got four kids. He's senior pastor. He's going to watch this one of these days. Listen to me, David. Anyway, <laughs> he's so busy that he doesn't have, chance, he doesn't have time to practice go golf. But when we go play, he expects to hit every shot perfectly <laughs> without practice. Tiger Woods, all of those guys, they practice. They may hit thousands of balls every day just trying to get good. David doesn't hit any balls. He expects to go out and hit the ball better than the professionals do, whatever. Now, those are not positive expectations, folks. But it sure helps me win. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. We are in competition, you know. But not with each other. We are in competition with this world. It is a competition for the souls, the lost souls of men and women. Satan wants everybody to be lost that he can get lost. Because he feels like that brings a reproach on the name of Jesus. I want every person that can be saved to get saved. Because I believe that brings glory to the name of Jesus. It is a competition. But I'm not competing with you. You're not competing with me. We're competing against the adversary. 
Praise God. Uh, let me move along here. No, no, I don't want to move past that. Uh, G, we are more than workers together with Christ. We are Christ's own ambassadors. We represent him and his kingdom when we speak to you. We do so in Christ's place. Our message is be reconciled to God, your Savior. We are ambassadors for Christ. If you look on the next page, under ambassador, it says ambassador, the complete biblical library, Greek English dictionary. Here's a definition out of this reference book over what this Greek word translated ambassador means. The Greek word means an official rep as official representatives, they spoke with the authority of God to the extent that when they spoke the message of reconciliation, it was as though God himself was doing the talking. That's what it means when he called us ambassadors. When we speak, it's as though God himself was doing the talking. I heard a story that went this way. There was uh, in the Midwestern part of the United States, about the middle of the country, they have, uh, they have some pretty severe weather sometimes, and uh, uh, they'll have floods. And there was this man stranded on his rooftop, rooftop of his house, in the middle of a flood, and there were floods everywhere. And he prayed for God to, uh, to rescue him. And a man and a helicopter flew over and wanted to pluck him off the roof. He said, no, 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 no. He was, he was praying for God to rescue him. And then somebody came by in a boat and said, come, come get in the boat. The guy said, no, no, I'm praying for God to rescue me. And then, and then this, the, the water was rising and the man was about to drown and this log floated by. All the man had to do was reach out and wrap himself around the log and he could have survived. But he didn't. He was waiting. He was praying for God to rescue him. He drowned. He went to heaven. He said, God, I don't understand what went wrong. I prayed for you to rescue me, and you didn't. The Lord said, I sent the helicopter. I, I sent the boat. I sent the log. In other words, he was looking for God to do it by himself. But God never does that kind of work by himself. And whether you know it or not, whether the people you're talking to or not, when you talk to them, that's God who's shown up to witness to them. Think about that a little bit. I'm not God. Well, of course you and I aren't God. But from God's perspective, when he prompts you to talk to somebody and you talk to them, in eternity, they're not going to be able to say, God, you didn't give me a chance. Because he's going to say, I sent someone by to talk to you, and you rejected it. That's why Paul said it this way. And here's the other side of witnessing. We are the saver, not savior, but the saver of life unto some. And with the savor of death unto others. Some hear what we have to say. And they believe it. And God gives them life. Not because it's us saying it. We're just his work fellow labor. God's doing the work. But then we, we share him with others. And they reject it. And that witness becomes the evidence in eternity that proves that God gave them a choice a chance and you can say well I don't want to be responsible for that well then guess what you'll be standing before God saying why are you sending me to hell I was baptized in Jesus name filled with the Holy Ghost because I called you to be my mouthpiece and you wouldn't talk 